So a while back, I created a video shows you how to install Reaper within the Linux environment. And a lot of people ask, how can we install our VSTs? And that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. So in that video, I used Fedora. In this video, I'm using Debian. Now I made a switch due to stability and all that stuff. I'm not going to get into it now. Here's how this works. Just like when using Pro Tools, if you wanted to install a VST, you have to use a wrapper. So the same thing applies here. We're going to use a piece of software called Carla, and that's going to allow you to take your VSTs and run them inside of Reaper, which is installed in the Linux environment. All right, so let's go ahead and launch Reaper. Now, the first thing I want to do, I want to open Carla. Now, in the future, we can actually dive into Carla and I can make a whole entire video on this specific plugin. All right, so what I'm going to do is go to my download folder. I got a VST folder there and there is a LA2A emulation DLL. It's a VST, it's a free plugin and check this out. It works. How exciting is that? This is a VST that's designed for the Windows environment and we're opening it within Debian. There are some installers out there that we need to try out and that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, so let's close Reaper. So I downloaded Wave Central and we're going to try it out. So I'm, I have Alacrity open, which is a terminal. Now I'm going to go to the downloads folder. So we're going to use ls to see what's in the directory. Now in the Windows world, you would type in dir, slightly different. Now we're going to install Wave Central. Now, for the most part, you could install everything by double clicking, but I want to do everything in terminal. By the way, I'm going to run it as root. I know I shouldn't really do that, but I just wanted to give it a try. So I'm using the sudo command. Check the description. I'll have some of those commands there. Now, I'm actually running the wave central and let it do its thing. I might actually just speed this up. So let's just do that. All right. So it's actually going to error out, which sucks, meaning we're not going to be able to use Waves plugins in this environment. So we're going to run everybody's favorite dongle, iLock. Let's give that a try. Even if you could get the VST to run successfully, if it's protected using the iLock and we can't get that working, then we're screwed basically, right? So let's go ahead and try to do that. Uh, the problem was my internet was acting up when I was doing this. So that's why you see the pages in reachable. So you know what? Let me pause and forward the video. Okay. So I got the link and now I'm going to use wget to download the actual files. So instead of downloading it through the web browser, I'm doing it through terminal. By the way, you can also do this in the Windows environment. So now that the download's complete, the only thing left to do is to unzip. So I'm running the unzip command. Again, you can do this by double clicking, but I like the terminal. So everything has extracted and let's go ahead and go into that directory. So we're going to do the same thing. Basically use that wine command and install this using wine. All right, so the same thing as the Wave Central, we're going through the setup files. Let's hope that this does not fail. So it looks like it's going to be a success as far as the installation portion of it. And there we go. So let's go ahead and open the iLock Manager. By the way, you're going to see the Waves icon there. Although it's there, believe me, it doesn't work. It failed. So right on top of that, you'll see iLock License Manager and it actually opens a little sluggish and the text doesn't look that good as you can see, right? But here's the problem. The iLock is connected. I made sure of that and it's not finding the iLock, which it's not good at all. But here's the thing. You should be able to log in and do computer-based authorizations. I wouldn't trust it. I've heard some horror stories. People try this method and once they rebooted the system, they lost their licenses. So if you want to try this, do it at your own risk. 
I didn't want to mess around with it, although people claim that it does work. So let's move on to the next thing. So next we're going to try fab filter plugins. So we can either install all of them, but I'm only going to install one just for this video. Now, all I have to do is find the VST path. Once I do that, then I press OK and next and let it install. Yes, you want to uncheck the AAX version. We don't need that. There you go. Uh, did not error out, but let's see if it works. The installer doesn't mean anything. Are we able to load their plugins? And we have that DLL, Fat Filter Pro L2. So far, so good. And there we go. All that's left is for us to enter our serial number. Now, originally when I did this, I was so excited about this because that is one of my favorite plugins. Actually, all their plugins I love and I use all the time. So, so now we're going to move on to the next uh, set of plugins. So ahead of time, I downloaded the Plugin Alliance installer. And now I'm going to choose a plugin just like I did with FabFilter. I'm only going to select one plugin and hopefully we can get that plugin to work. So I'm going to go and select my product. And let's go ahead and find something. So I just purchased this plugin here and I'm loving it. Let's see if we can get it to work. So we're going to go ahead and install. All right. So everything is installed. No problem whatsoever. Let's go ahead and see if we can load that VST. And it actually worked, but activation required. Now I was pretty excited about this because as you can see, it worked It loaded the VST. Now, the way I have this set up, don't use their online activation. I have a USB drive that acting like an eye lock. So it activates my waves and my plugin alliance uh, plugin. So wherever I go, I just plug that USB in and it acts just like a dongle. Well, it technically is a dongle. So that's what I'm currently doing here. I'm running that dongle. It's uh, connected to a remote system, to a Raspberry Pi that I have. And I just share it across the network. Because on my main machine, I don't have any USB slots available. So I have to uh, do this remotely. So let's go ahead and launch uh, the software. Now this has to run using the root command, the sudo command. Then you input your password. And there you go. It's a trial version of the software. It's only going to allow you to connect to one thing. Or let's say share one item, but that's fine. So I'm sharing that flash drive that has my authorizations. So now back in Reaper, let's see if we can load that DLL file, that VST. And it failed. I'm assuming the same thing as the iLock. Uh, I'm pretty sure we might be able to activate it over the internet. I might try it. The Plugin Alliance setup, you can deactivate the computer if anything goes wrong. So you know, compared to losing an iLock license, I feel more comfortable experimenting with this. So I just might do that. But as of right now, it failed. So you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to activate one of these plugins. So we're going to take a look at Urban Punch by United Plugins. This is a plugin that I have for quite some time. It just released. I will have a review on my channel really, really soon on that plugin. So, so let's go ahead and open it. So we're going to go to that VST folder and another VST folder and there you go, Urban Punch. And the plugin is fully activated. So as you can see, there's no nag, nothing's popping up. Now this plugin does have two options to use the license file or to do it across the network. I decided to choose the license file. So I'm assuming the other one works just fine, but as you can see, it works great. So let's go ahead and remove all the stuff we installed. So we're going to launch terminal. And we're going to run the wine on installer. So hopefully in the next video, I'm going to have more plugins for you guys, some audio. And at the same time, I'm going to show you guys how to install an as for all alternative. It does exist and it actually works pretty well. So was this a failure? No, because we got some plugins to install.
Although I'm not giving up on the wave stuff yet. I'm going to keep experimenting with that. Uh, I showed you with iLock, you do have the capability of doing computer-based authorizations. Don't trust it. You never know. Maybe the guys over at iLock will finally decide to make a driver. Who knows? So there you go. That's how you install your VSTs inside of the Linux world. I really want to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. First time watching, press that subscribe button. This is Ray and I'm out of here. Later, guys.